All right, so you're a chat, you set up your Azure Linux, you set up your Talent Window Manager, and you've customized your ZSH. Now you've got one last thing to do, your text editor, which is arguably the most important thing to customize. As all chats know, that the only text editor that you should really be using is Vim. Now Vim by itself is great, but it could be even better. For example, you may want to easily copy paste in out of Vim, you may want a better language support, you may want a file browser or a fuzzy finder. Now how do we get to doing that? It's actually fairly easy. So I've got a terminal window open right here, and of course this is Arch Linux. So the first thing I'm going to do is start by downloading NeoVim. Now, if you are on an inferior distro, for example, like you've been to a Debian, then you may want to check that NeoVim is running on a fairly recent version. So right here it's running 0.72, and if you're running a really old version, like a 0.4 or 0.5, you may have some issues because most of these plugins are made to run with the most latest version. So now we got this out of the way, to start NeoVim, type in NVim, and it's going to open up NeoVim, but I don't want to use that because I'm so used to type in Vim or VI, so I'm going to make a alias for that. So I'm going to go to my ZSHRC, I'm going to find an empty spot, you can type this anywhere, here it is fine, I'm going to type an alias, vim equals to nvim, and also I'm going to type an alias, vi equals nvim. Well, this is going to do every time I type in vi, or if I type in vim, it's just going to open new vim. This just makes it a bit more elegant. Now we've got basic new vim installed, let's start configuring things. From your home directory, go to .config, and in here make a new directory, and call it nvim, go to that directory inside this we're going to make two more new directories first we're going to make auto load and this is going to be the directory where it's going to auto load everything inside of it so we want to have our plugins in there so they auto start every time we start new of them we're also going to make a new directory we're going to call it vim plug now what vim plug is it's a plugin manager for vim of course vim has a plugin manager all right so let's start by downloading that so go to google type in vim plug this should take you to the GitHub page, this is the GitHub page and to install it, it's quite simple click on plug.vim raw I'm going to copy all this inside your nvim directory, go to auto load inside this directory, I'm going to make a new file, we're going to call this plug.vim and I'm going to paste all this in there sweet, save and exit now we've got vim plug installed, we just have to configure it so we're going to go to the vim plug directory in here, we're going to make a new file, we're going to call it plugins.vim Inside here, we're going to put in a couple of things First thing first, I'm going to call plug hashtag begin And then in here, we're going to put the location of where we want the plugins to be installed And we want them to be in the autoload directory So I'm going to type in .config nvim autoload plugged And then I'm going to close this Make a new lines. I'm gonna end this by typing call plug hashtag and just like that. Sweet. Now in this configuration file, we're gonna put all the plugins that we want to be installed. To find the plugins is quite easy. They're all on GitHub. So I'm gonna search for NeoVim Nerd Tree, which is a file tree for Vim. And to install this plugin, just come in project name with the username. And in your configuration file, find empty line, press in tab one, type in plug with a capital P space in quote put in that username and project name so i've added a few more plugins in here the first one is going to be our file tree the second one is going to be a file browser the third one is quite handy it shows you what key bounds that you have fourth one telescope this is a fuzzy finder and these last two are just dependencies because yes some of these plugins require dependencies and you can find if they require dependencies in the github page so for example here is your telescope and the github page it says required dependencies is this one so i have it Configure there. Once you've got this set up, just save and exit. And now we're going to make the init.vim. So make sure that you're in your nvim directory, not in the autoload or vim plug. And make a new file. We're going to call it init.vim. And this is the file that vim is going to launch first when it starts. Inside this file, we're going to add any other commands or any other files that to be sourced when vim starts. Our vim plug configuration file we just created is not going to start by itself. So we're going to have to add it in here. So type in source and then the file location. So it's going to be in.config, nvim, vim, plug, plugins.vim. Sweet, save and exit. One more thing we're going to do, the ranger plugin is going to require ranger to be installed on our system, so we're going to install that. Nice and simple, now I'm going to launch vim. So, to install all these plugins, I'm going to type in semicolon to launch a command, and I type in plug, 
install with a capital P, press enter. What this is going to do is going to go through that file, going to see all the plugins that we have listed, and it's going to install it for you. Now it's installed. Now we can see if these plugins are working correctly. So I'm going to type in Ranger with a capital R, press enter, and you can see indeed Ranger is installed and working. I can scroll through these directories and through these files within Vim, and it's working nice and smooth. We can also check if Telescope is working correctly. So I'm going to type in Telescope, find underscore files. And we can see this is also working, so I can search in files in here, and nice and quick. I can search in it the Vim, and it's gonna just launch this file for you. You can start editing right away, so this is nice and handy. We can also check for nerd tree, which is our file tree, and we can see this is also working pretty nice. I can scroll through these directories and through these files. Now this is all pretty nice, but there is one problem in here. I don't want to type in semicolon, telescope, space, find files every single time I want to launch the fuzzy finder. I want to launch it nice and quick. With a keybind. Now to do that, we have to make a keybinds file. So inside your NVIM directory, make a new file, and you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it keybinds.vim, and in here we're going to type in all the keybinds that we want to set. So I will show you how that's done. So I'm going to type in norm map space r, and then I'm going to make a space and I'm type in cmd, and then the command. So this one's going to be ranger, and then cr. So, how does this work? So this will tell Vim to bind space plus R to launch a command and the command is going to be a ranger. Right after it types this command, it's going to press enter to execute this command. So let's try this out. Alright, now this file is not going to be launched by itself. We're going to have to include it in the init.vim. So we're going to open init.vim. And in here, I'm going to make a new line, type in source, and I'm going to give it the location of the keybinds file. Save and exit. Now if I open Vim and type in space plus R, it should open ranger. And you can see it indeed opens Ranger. Now I can have the file browser. Now I no longer have to type in Ranger every time that I want to browse through files, which is much more faster, much more quicker. Okay, now let's do that for the rest of the plugins. So as you can see, this is already all easier. I don't even have to exit Vim to go to a different file. I can go to a different file within Vim and I can start editing right away. So I'm gonna make a new keybind in here. This one is gonna be space plus F. And I'm gonna make this launch fuzzy finder. I'm gonna make another one in here. And this one's gonna be for the file tree. I'm going to make one last one, and this one's going to have space, but nothing after it, so it's just going to be space. And in here, I'm going to type in which key space in quotes. I'm going to type in space again and close this. Now, what this is going to do every time I press space and nothing else is going to launch which key and it's going to ask which key what key bonds there is with space. So let's try this out. So now, if I press space, it will show me all the keybinds I have with space. So if I press space plus F, it will open telescope, space plus R is going to open ranger, space plus T is going to open uh, nerd tree. So now if I press F, it will just land me to telescope and I can just search any file in here, go right to it, space R, right into ranger, space T is going to open my file tree in here. Now another handy thing about init.vim is that, that you can put any command that you want it to be started when new Vim starts up. So for example, I'm going to put in here, set clipboard plus equals to unnamed plus. And what this command is going to do is going to sync my PC clipboard with my Vim clipboard. So it's easier to copy paste in and out of Vim. Another command I'm going to put in here, I'm going to type in set timeout len equals to 250. And what this is going to do is that every time I press space, it's much more faster to launch a GUI menu. So you may find in here that the which key menu may be a little ugly or the colors that may not be something that you're into and that's because this plugin is not configured. Actually, in fact, none of these plugins are configured. There is a lot more configuration that can go to each one of these plugins to make them truly unique and make them truly wonderful. Now, I didn't want to go too in-depth in this installation video because I didn't want this video to be too long. This video's main purpose is just to get you up and running and get you to start from being a VS Code normie. There is a lot more configuration, there is a lot more customization that can go to new of them and you can honestly spend hours and hours and hours just trying to customize it. But what this video is really meant to is just to show you how simple it is and how easy it is and to get you up and running. So then you can go on your own and you can find all these different plugins and all these different themes and you can customize it to be something that is truly unique and to stop you from using VS Code. So that's about it for this video. Hopefully you find it fun and enjoyable and hopefully you learn something new. I'm going to peace out and I hope to see you in the next video. See you.